Hello everyone. Uh, I hope you're having a good day. Uh, so I've decided to kind of go through my earlier paintings, considering it's the end of the year, and I don't know. I just thought it'd be cool to look at my older ones that I haven't seen in a while as well. They'd be hiding in my drawer. So this is the one I've just recently posted, the unagi one. You guys seem to really like it. I, even though I don't do that much of a food painting, but I don't know. It seems like you guys like the food ones. So I've gonna, I'm gonna share all the food ones I've painted over the years, at least for the past two years, the ones that I've kept, and some of the ones that don't make it to Instagram. So yeah, let's go. So this is the unagi one. You can see it's very detailed. The white. So the one of you guys asked me how do I paint the white on, and it's basically this, the Kuretake white ink. It's kind of dirty. It it's all dried up, but you can easily rewet it and use it. So it really gives you this very opaque white paint that you can use as highlights. Uh, alternatively. Alternatively, I also use this one. I, oops, I got it from Japan. And it's the Uniball Signal Broad. It, the tip is very, as, you, as the name suggests, it's broad. So it's not very good for details. And that's why for detailed ones, I usually use the white ink. And it really does look very, on watercolor, it does show up. So this was actually from Japan, and the shop is called uh, Nadai Unatoto, I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. And it really made an impression on me because the unagi was amazing. And I really like the orange signboard. I, I don't know, I don't... It really strikes me as a very um, interesting signboard to paint. So I painted this as well. So this is one. Let's see what's next. So maybe I should go in the chronological order after this. So ta-da! This is Cafe Beanie, the Korean dessert place. I'm not sure if you guys know it, but I think I think this is the first one, the first food illustration I've ever made. And this is even before I started this Instagram uh, account and so these are bingsus, they are Korean ice desserts. I probably did this in, I don't know, 2015? So long ago, 5, 6 years. I, I, I didn't even date this, so I'm not sure when this happened. But yeah, this is kind of the first one. I was still using my older watercolor paints. And to be honest, I'm quite surprised with the details I put on this one. It's not too bad. So yeah, this is the first one. I... Uh, I took a liking for food paintings after visiting Japan just cause like Japan has this I mean they, their food just looks amazing so this was my matcha series I don't know if you remember and this is my favorite matcha latte from Dotor in Ikebukuro I mean they, it's a franchise like Starbucks so but I had this in Ikebukuro and it's dated in 2017 so this was the matcha latte and this is my matcha cheese tart from from Pablo. It's quite famous. They have shops all around the world. And this is from Akihabara. I got it from Akihabara. It was really hard. Like I remember struggling so much for this one just because I don't know, watercolor is so transparent. It's really hard to make it look saturated, to make it look food like. I don't know, maybe I always feel kind of that uh, like gouache or poster paint would be more suited for food illustration but I have this affinity for watercolor so I do everything in watercolor and this is a parfait from Nana's Green Tea they also have a lot of shops around the world they have one in Malaysia and yeah I remember struggling for this this swirls part I still can't do swirls right not sure how people do it it just really difficult to get the soles look not messy and get the light and the dark part to look realistic. I don't know. I'll keep practicing. I'll keep practicing. I won't give up. 
Uh, oh yeah, so the ones that uh, on the matcha series, one that did not mean to Instagram. <laughs> this one was when I was still in the UK. So I guess this is before the matcha series in Japan. So this is from I can't remember the name anymore, but it's a matcha ice cream from a shop in London. So yeah, this one and there's a lavender one. So this is from the lavender field, the me field, me field in London. So me and my friend visited it and I got the lavender ice cream. So this is my attempt on painting lavender ice cream. So, but they're not that great. That's why I never posted it. And then what do we have here? So, oh, I always, when I paint food, I always like painting a series, sort of. So this is my waffle series. And yeah, I really like this one. And this is from Fluff. Uh, it's only in Malaysia. They only have one shop in Taman Paramount. You guys gotta try it if you haven't been there yet. And this is their Pooh's, Pooh's, Pooh Bear's favorite. It's basically like caramel ice cream on a honeycomb biscuits and a waffle. This is great. And this is my first one. I can't remember what the name is. Something raspberry and chocolate. But yeah, both of these are amazing. Um, We have... Oh, Japanese foods! Yeah, I told you I like painting in Paris, so <laughs> I, I painted this one. It's the tendon. Like, my favorite food in Japanese restaurant has to be tendon. Uh, for some reason, I really like this one, even though it's not very, like, detailed. It's not, it's not at all detailed, actually. It's very um, basic. Yeah, it's very basic. But, I don't know, I like, I like how the basicness of it, the messiness of it created the real the feel of tempura like the the fried edges and yeah this one took a lot of time so i'm um, if you've been to japan you've probably been to sukiji and sukiji is like their seafood market so i had their kai sendon which is like sashimi rice balls and they had sashimi, so this is a salmon, tuna, uh, not sure what this is, but basically assortment of uh, sashimis. Yeah, this took very long. But there is, I quite like like this part of the fish where I got the well, you know, the, the textures with the grease portion quite realistic. I think I could have done better on my salmon part. It does not look salmon at all. But oh oh well, you know. <laughs> What's done is done. And uh, what's next? So before I reach the last painting, yeah, it's the last already. I told you I don't really paint food paintings. But I always use this paper. So it's the Muse paper from Japan. I got I got this bundle. It's quite cheap actually. How much was it? So it's 480 yen. So that's about 20 ringgit for quite quite a bit of um paper I can't remember how many there are inside I use this a lot because I particularly like the texture of the paper uh, it's there's two sides I always use the so there's this one side where there's diagonal line and then there's the less obvious side. I always use this side so I like the size as well so it's a perfect size for like one painting so the last one for today is chandol so if you're not Malaysian, you probably don't know what this is. And it's basically an ice dessert with brown sugar. So this part is brown sugar, uh, gula melaka specifically. And this green stuff are called chandor. And usually we topped it with red beans. And yeah, this is very, I mean, it's, like, it's very rustic, like very vintage. People put it in this porcelain blue china. And this is from Kuanghua. So Kuanghua is in Happy Garden, if I remember correctly. And they're very famous. So I visited there with my friends. I just thought it looks amazing. So I painted this for Merdeka, the Independence Month. So that's all for today. Um, I'm not sure if there's anything else. Oh wait, maybe I'll share some of my tools. So because all these food paintings, as in contrast to like my like line pen and wash drawings. Uh, I usually use my Sigma Micron pens. 
but because for fruit paintings I don't like the harsh lines around the painting so I only use pencils to outline them and usually I use my favorite pencil from Mitsubishi and HB I got this in Japan but I recently found it in Korea as well not sure if they sell it anywhere else but this is my favorite pencil for because it doesn't it doesn't disappear after you put washes on it and it doesn't smudge so it's very important when using when doing this kind of paintings that it doesn't smudge it doesn't you know turn your paintings black because you put water on top of it uh what else oh, oh in terms of like because it's so detailed i really have to use this really small so i got this art pack nylon series size 1 it's so so thin and let's see if you can see this so yeah this is what I use I have a lot of erasers <laughs> I went to Korea and got a bunch of erasers <laughs> and a bunch of pencils as well I have this thing for like collecting pencils and erasers because I like to test the other ones even though I always get HP but different pencils have different feels on the paper so I like to test them out and I like to collect them as like souvenirs because for example this one's from Korea so it has like Korean words on it then this from Japan so in terms of get instead of getting like magnets I just get pencils <laughs> it, it says made in Korea and like in Mr. Bishu one it says uh, Japan wait where is this Japan so it's like a souvenir so I done in Korea I haven't found a lot of uh, pencils so I got a bunch of erasers instead so there's a Tombow one there's a Monami one there's a Morning Glory one so I really like this one so this one I feel it's it's a bit hard so like I was trying out this is the worst eraser I've gotten so far it's from Zaris Aristo from Austria. This is the worst one from Austria. Uh, it's so bad. Like, well, I mean, it's just meant to erase things. It, it just can't erase properly. So I feel like this one runs into a similar category for erasing because it's so hard. It creates such a lot of mess as well because it's so flaky. And it erases, but with some of the watercolor. Uh, paper that I use especially like this one is so thin so delicate uh, I mean like if you're using something harder like this one like the Windsor Newton one where it's like 300 grams then maybe you can go for this one it's bigger it's it and if you're going for bigger paintings it's bigger you can cover more area but usually I like softer erasers so like Monami I have another one from I have another one from Faber Castell the dust free one so yeah, for food painting, I like this soft erasers like this. I use a very thin brush. Uh, so, yeah, so if it's not size 1, I would use my size 4 brush from Jackson's Art. So it's an art uh, shop in, in UK, in England. But I think, no, I'm pretty sure they ship worldwide. So, so if you're interested in all these tools, you can check them out. Uh, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. Uh, this is my first video of this sort. Actually, it's my first video on this, uh, on this account. Except for the earlier ones when I did the time-lapse one. Oh yeah, do check out some of my YouTube videos where I do time-lapse of my painting. I have two on my YouTube channel. You can find it in my, on the, my profile, the link to the YouTube. And yeah, thanks. See you in my next one. Uh, I'll probably share some of my other my scenery for paintings. And looking forward to that.